morning. Welcome to IMTS 2018. Let's walk around. Let's see some amazing CNC machines and technology and pretty cool. We're going to start off here at the Hermley booth. So Hermley is really pushing automation this year and they've got a few different systems. They call this one HS Flex. So you can fit different size pallets and you can adjust the vertical spacing of these racks for different size parts. It's a pretty cool system because they really show the range of gamut. You can have a large tombstone with, with a high part density. You can have mighty white pit bulls holding parts like that. That one right there is actually carbide. They have an amazing tool that they put in an air turbine to engrave carbide, which is crazy. They've got a fifth axis set up here with your more traditional vices. Uh, FCF type system where you can get to actual six sides of the parts. You can actually come underneath that part and get to finish the whole thing in one op. Pretty cool. And you can use HS Flex for true automation unattended machine, but when you don't want to, this door, you open it and then you can walk into the machine and you have more of a traditional machine center. So you can use it as you see fit. So really trying to show the balance between uh, automated and traditional. Then they have the other side of automation, which is sort of rack style, which is also really cool. You can swap different racks in with different size parts, uh, and this is using a robot. And so these are amazing, these eagles, and I gotta give them a big shout out. They, I walked into the booth and they, they said, we wanna thank you for what you do and sharing about education and uh, the CNC machine world and paying it forward, and they made us one of these, which is uh, you know, one of the coolest things out there. Uh, and they're absolutely beautiful, about a seven hour runtime. Uh, and you can see how they've got this KUKA robot designed to offer a really easy automated solution, but you can also pop that door open and swap out the rack to change the parts you're running. That's how it works, right? Healthy budget. How do you guys define this machine? You don't. You would. You call it a mill turn? It's a multitask. Multitasking. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I would call it capital M, little t. Yep. So more milling than turning. Yep. But one and done. And this does. This doesn't have a sub. Oh my god. The glove. Here we go. Name that person. Sweet. HSK twenty forty four. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. to the C four. Okay. Pretty cool. They're doing an OD polishing op right now. So they're doing abrasive machining, like truly a one and done solution, going from round bar to turning to milling to polishing. I saw some I saw some grinding type wheels or cutoff type wheels. Yes. That guy right there. Really cool. And, and this has a three stage grinding process. Okay. Um, so we have obviously a rough, medium, and fine finish. And okay. This is the super polish. Um, we would normally automate a diamond oil okay so onto the ball and then we would polish that in to basically lap the ball to a mirror finish got it uh, holding less than five micron form and sphericity okay amazing look at that that's the whole spindle head insane I love this. Look at this five axis articulating spindle head. I could watch this for days. It's almost like that. Anybody seen that old 
hexapod, like 1960s five axis, like Delta style machine. It reminds me of that, but you can see the, the I guess you've got, I wonder what the springs are for. It's a way of pretension it, but you've got the rail systems. It's <laughs> amazing. So here with a friend who's looking, uh, and they're looking for really, really, really small machine work type stuff. So medical type work, and this is the type of thing. Just like the machine we just saw over Sterag, this is a Willeman and amazing quality. Mil hey, Milter multitasking, hey, just amazing. Hey. One and done. Yeah, seeing it, seeing it move into that, yeah. the soft jaws on the vice there. Yeah. That's the best part about milling from bar, man. It's, it's a bucket full of parts. Right. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So we're looking at the uh, Roku Roku, Japanese-made machines. So we weren't allowed to touch this part, but it's about a 58 Rockwell piece of material. It's called Stavax, and what they're showing off here is the combination of the machine and the tooling. And my GoPro didn't focus very well on the material, and I think because we were close and it's so shiny. This is straight off the machine. Absolutely spectacular. Hanging out with the crew. Taking a look at the uh, DMU-50. The mono crystal diamond tooling. Look at that finish. Absolutely stunning. Bottle mold. All right, so this is another DMU-50 I just came across. And it's actually good to see it without the row and automation to get a better feel uh, for what that table would look like on work envelope and work size. Oh, just machining an Iron Man head, no big deal. And it's bigger brother. Look at that. Here I'm standing in front of a DMG Mori NHX horizontal pallet cell. Two stories can hold a huge quantity of incredibly large parts, really automation at its finest. DMG Mori NVX 5100, this is their absolute primo high-end three-axis vertical box ways, incredibly rigid, incredibly accurate machine going to town here on a huge block of 4140. It's silent. Cutting dry, and that's not just a trade show thing. We're seeing more and more people cut steel dry, which can be really nice to not have to deal with the coolant systems on your machine or coolant on the part. Three quarter inch end mill at 230 inches a minute.
box way machine, rugged, accurate, precise, awesome. Now we're over at the Okuma booth, we're looking again at the M560V, still one of the most popular, really high-end, vertical, three-axis machining centers here. They've got a fourth axis on it. Uh, we really like that machine. So that's, that's a OD, OD boring head. Is an OD boring head? The large tool you just had in there? Right next to it, though, was this bridge mill, which is just amazing. The size of these is hard to describe when you're not there in person, but giant HSK 100 or Cat 50 style machines that sometimes are used to make big V12 engine blocks like this. Sometimes they're actually used to make other machining centers like Card here to the Haas tour where we had the good chance to see the machines at the Haas factory machining some of the largest Haas parts for making Haas machines. I mean, just amazing. Normally I don't like lays, but I don't know, something about this one I could get behind. Holy cow. Oh my god. Is that one of the silent tools? Yeah, look at that. Coro Plus silent tool. The boring bar. That's insane. Look at that chuck. <laughs> the tail stock. Oh well, yeah, nice to meet you. Well, we got our bingo card filled out. Joking aside, Haas does have two really good, awesome new machines, the EC400 and the UMC1000. And it doesn't stop there. Tool change times are over 50% faster, so your tools start making chips sooner. We've also added five inches for 127 millimeters. Totally different. Love that. Main work here, op two work right there on the side bikes. That's cool. By now, the new C750 needs no introduction. It's been the best selling product. These machines are insanely fast. Looks like an air bearing, uh, one of the accelerators. It runs, you know, 60 or 90k spindles. Watch this tool change. They're actually an awesome setup. Five axis, two off.
I'm here looking at this machine, hanging out with Woo. Henry Holsters. Here's a Haas Trunnion showing some 3 plus 2 positional 5 axis work, which is awesome. What's even cooler is, see that squirt of oil that just came out? That's a new tap cutting oil squirt gun option for the Haas machine. So this isn't your standard coolant. This actually has the ability to directly shoot tapping oil or fluid or whatever you prefer right onto the tap. This can absolutely help with tap reliability, tap life, and the quality of the tapped hole. Standard is 8,000 uh, RPM spindle. You guys enjoying the show? Now we're over in the tooling room at the Big Kaiser booth. What they're showing here is a fully automated setup where they've got a robot, a heat shrink machine, and a tool setter. So the machine can detect when your tool's worn out. It can remove the tool from a shrink fit hitter. It can put a new tool in at the correct overall gauge length, and then it can remeasure that new tool and the gauge length, update your CNC machine controller. Fully automated, amazing. Same booth, Big Kaiser. In fact, the same cell. They debuted the new Big Kaiser fully automatic CNC boring head. So we've got one of these in our shop that has the digital readout on it, but this is different. It's not just a digital readout of what your boring head's current diameter is. It can actually update its diameter based on the CNC machine control. So what this means is you can probe holes in geometry and have it automatically adjust to compensate for things like wear or tool deflection or tool pressure, or you can use the same boring head to cut two different diameters. That's amazing. So the other thing we wanna look at is different types of tool holders. So we've heard good things about the Mega Chuck. 
And what's really cool about this is you rotate this, it will close down, but there's no threads. It's just a two degree taper with needle bearings, I believe. And so there's no friction of the threading to overcome. It will eventually, using a wrench, probably like that one right there, it will seal down on those faces made together and it's got incredibly good clamping, uh, very low run out and really good dampening for roughing. Not inexpensive, I think, um, between five and $700 per holder, but um, you know, similar to a really, really high end uh, alternative options, including the Uber Chuck, which we love, uh, but I want to try this one out. This is the torque tool I was talking about. So what I like about this is it measures the torque in the holder. So regardless of what style of tool holder, collet, adapter, whatever you've got on the end, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. So if we grab a tool like this, you can drop it in there. And then as we rotate it this way, again, this would be with a one-way bearing wrench. So these are one-way bearings, so one way will tighten, so it'll lock it. So as we push on it that way, switch the units, love it. Put on peak torque, like so. Next up, we're over at the Swift Carb booth. They manufacture some of the most impressive end mills for not only material removal rates, but how quickly you can ramp in. We're gonna machine this part out in just a few minutes. Good news is it's really fast. Bad news is bet between the chips flying and the coolant spraying, not the easiest thing to film, but stick around folks. I think we're gonna pick up some of these end mills and test some here in our shop. So if you're interested in seeing more stuff like that, click subscribe below. Here we go. Folks, they're running this tool at 12,000 RPMs. That's 1,570 service feet per minute. 10 thou feed per tube or 375 inches per minute cutting feed rate 0.315 inch optimal load or radial cut 0.875 inch depth of cut with a 12 degree ramp angle that is over 100 cubic inches per minute and about a 30 horsepower cut amazing that's your tool yeah it's just if you want to clean up on this one then it'll get in Thank you. Say hi to CJ from hi. Autodesk. Okay, titanium. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's the same tool, just seven flutes instead of three. But not, you're not doing the deep, the steep ramp on there. Yeah. They, uh, it's a four degree ramp angle in titanium. Okay. Got it. So it still cuts like crazy. Mm -hmm. What's up with the? Corner rounder there. You know? This one? Yeah. That's just huge. Is it theirs? I think. Maybe. Insert? I mean, that's totally weird, different. Yeah, it's got a part number. Sweet. Yeah, Super B. So that, that's their uh, carbide insert brand. Oh, I didn't know they did insert totally. Yeah. Yeah. So Look at these guys. Monsters. So they've got all these guys, and then. Okay, here you go. So it's all their insert. Hold on, I'm not filming. Look at that. Here we're at the Amugi booth. They've got a Hermless C42, again, amazing machine. They're showing off their circle segment cutters. The first time I heard that phrase, I thought, what the heck does that mean? What they are are barrel shaped or special shaped cutters that have tapers and radius that let you do five axis machining, whether it's roughing or finishing. And because of that special barrel or circle segment shaped cutter, you're able to rough down five axis walls or complex surfaces with bigger step down and still get less scalloping or better surface finishes. Uh, 
One of the big changes between IMTS 2016, by the way, card here to our video on that, and IMTS 2018 was both additive and hybrid manufacturing. We had a couple questions for the applications guys over at Mark Ford, so we were excited to see them there, and we got to take a look at one of their metal 3D printers. Yeah, I think it's, you know, that's, that's a lot. I mean, we like cards, but that's really nice. Yeah. Little ineffectors. So this is awesome. That is 174. 174 stainless. So here's what I didn't know: is that is not what I expected. It is. Can we open that door? It is actually kind of just like our Mark II printer. It just comes on a filament roll. So in the other is support material. It's the release material, right? So you see the release layer. Okay. Once that centers, that release layer is going to turn to a dust. Right? Okay. So you can pull it out of the centering furnace and literally just pick that part up off of the Okay, base. so it extrudes and then it centers after. Or I think That's I correct. just saw that. Yep. Is yep. That, so uh, it will uh, print I saw somebody walking state. through the... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so where are we prints going? prints in a, a green type state, which is what you see on the print bed there. And you can feel this. It's almost like a candle. It feels like a little waxy. Yeah. And that's that binder material that you see on the filament screen. Okay. So we pull that binder away and then we center it to the final end user. And, sorry, it centers in the same machine? Not in the same machine. Okay. There are two post-processing steps in the same Okay, so that has not been centered yet. Correct. Where is the, is the centering machine here? Uh, Unless you want to run 208 single phase to the back of my boot. <laughs> Have you seen some of the size of the machine? I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, know. I think that's <laughs> Okay, so yeah. Come with your idea. Print it, which is what we just saw right there. Then you center it, and boom. Then you machine it. I would machine it. This is actually awesome. So they compare the machine cost, which you know who knows, you know what the math is behind that. But I, I don't disagree. But then look at the print cost, fourteen dollars on the metal print, which is I mean it's almost it's it's almost like what we're printing our carbon fiber stuff for. Right. It's yeah. amazing. It's crazy. Same thing. Injection mold. Metal printed. Do you know what the material is on this? Okay. Sixty bucks in materials. This, you're gonna like this. We can actually print down to an internal M3 thread. Metal. Yeah. So we didn't we didn't cheat and run a test for it. Right. We, I think we put a little lapping compound on the bolt. Just ran it for once. Yep. Um, but that's not a. I mean, these are obviously loose threads. These aren't machine threads. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a showcase of our precision. Yeah. Sure. Sure. That's cool. Yeah. Quality control. CMMs. Are on the list. Hexagon is acquired Brown and Sharp, so to me it's still a little bit of a different name, but um, you know, a big player for sure. Zeiss, but big player. And let's go look at Mitsu Toyo. My goal here is to look at microscopes. To look at the size of this. Holy cow! That's amazing. Okay, so found a Mitsutoyu microscope. Um, quality looks awesome. The price point is actually right on. I, I had thought that these were uh, more expensive, but it's going to be probably hard to multitask it here, but it's amazing. The stereoscopic nature. Um, we're looking at this microchip right now. I'll flip it over to look at the, uh, the uh, wires here. It's amazing, and we're at the lowest power right now. So we can switch. So now we can click it in to say 25 power, refocus. So that wire is one of the you know, sort of gold fiber wires there. So for us, being able to quickly inspect tools, see edge failure, see coating failure, see chips, see nicks. Um, what you're not able to see through the camera though is how much better it looks when you look through the eyepieces you get a true 3d stereoscopic view and that's what we don't have right now um, so that is something i'm looking forward to so one of the things the mitsu toyo folks had shown us before was their wireless uh wireless tool so you can push 
you can take a thing put on your tool and you hit a button and it'll dump that into Excel or a database which could be really useful for just doing QC hitting a button you know and starting to get better at process control and quality tracking I didn't like the whole U-Wave thing though is a bulky connector and Velcro and large and you know just it just, just didn't look good and they finally fixed it and now it's just a little mini backpack on the back of the caliper or the quantum mic and it's awesome just awesome ergonomic so you know you can hold your mic fairly close to normal actually pretty close to normal totally buttons in the right spot um, so that's something I want to think about because we're still manually filling out some of our QC sheets So there's the risk of transposing numbers and it's just the hassle factor um, that I like who remembers the Q mark tour so too funny I was catching up with Kevin here and he was like yeah So we saw Grimzo's video on the phone and we wanted to embrace more of the lean stuff because we're trying to do more with less because their factory is at a power limit at least for now yeah. and so they've been trying to you know make the most of it so they got this this is a trade show display yeah back, it's a yeah little pro kit right but it looks great so you're machining that everything yeah yeah it's, awesome it's been a lot of fun are you using this stuff for in operations at the shop too so all of our shadow boards and all of our okay. toolboxes is something that we've been trying to focus on yeah trying to do more with less yeah you know and your video is great talking about lean manufacturing right, right. so awesome yeah it's been a lot of fun cool something new <laughs> Julie, Overdub Notes, Top End Builder, the Ox Tools, uh, Lipton, uh, Lawrence Tour, they, were, they did the EDM, just absolute insane precision. Yazda Horizontal Machining Center, machining ink canal, no coolant, using dry ice. Kern Micro, some of the nicest, most high-end five-axis machining centers. These tool racks are modular, so you can pull them out and replace them. This machine also has built-in automation card here to the Nicholas Hacko watch tour. They bought a used current pyramid and moved it from Europe to Sydney, Australia to make watches with it. Amazing story and awesome video. Best way to brag about your five axis machines ability and quality and stability and thermal awesomeness is machine a replica bean. I think the piece of art is technically called cloud gate, but it's the bean that everybody knows in the Chicago park. This is straight off the current machine. From Germany. Oh my God, it's amazing. You can actually see the underside cavity of it. George Fisher, AKA GF Machining Solutions, AKA Micron, amazing five axis machining centers. Most of their machines are really beyond our need or scope or, or budget, but they just came out with one called the Mill E500U that is much more affordable. Now, when I say that, it's probably still in the 300,000 plus range, but that's actually a compelling price point for the capabilities and the precision and accuracy of any high-end machine tool brand or five axis machining center. Here, it looks like they're making an injection mold for a hand drill or cordless drill. This is amazing. MX850, huge. And the MX-330. Goodbye. 
new pallet. pieces on a little mini pallet. Little engine right there. Mr. Matsura himself? Hi. How's the show? So it's doing well. Great. It's very busy. So. Good. That's good. a good thing. That's right. a good thing. All right. Here's the 3D printing side of this that we saw in the Connecticut video, but they didn't have the actual machine there. This is the actual machine. Oh, okay. Team Autodesk. Hello. Big Kaiser chip van cleaning off the man. Fun fact, I broke one of these on a man earlier this year. tail stock up on a man which I think will be a little bit of a different uh, work holding or workflow than we're used to okay so we've got a chick tombstone six parts three sides I'm guessing what we're gonna do is stabilize that guy so this actually answers one of our questions because we're still looking for five axis but we need to do this sort of tombstone and palletized workflow and the question is do you lose the axis rigidity so I'm guessing we're going to see that tailstock. That's that's the goal. Yes, that's the goal. Tip down, tailstock out. checking out the Grob, or is it pronounced Grobe? Yep. These are super high-end five-axis machining centers, very unique design, made in Germany, but they recently opened a huge facility here in Ohio, I think to serve a lot of the U.S. market, including Big Auto. Really cool machines, really fun to watch.
Stanek always has an amazing booth with so much going on, not just robots, but they make an amazing array of machines, servo motors, lasers, engravers, EDM, even injection molding machines. Checking out the fifth axis booth, we've seen fifth axis really explode. We see their stuff so often now, both at IMTS and just out touring shops. They've got their deuce style vise here, as well as their rock lock bases where you can have quick detach bases to move things, whether you're on a vertical machining center or horizontal or even a five axis. I haven't been on Yeah, so I like how you can drop this on to just anything ready to go. A little small dovetail clamp. Here we're at the Sarah Tizit booth. Not a name I was that familiar with, but they have a really strong reputation in other countries, including the continent of Europe. And wanted to check out and get to know their stuff a little bit better. Uh, they have a number of brands within like Comet, which makes some really good drills, I believe. And here they have some 3D printed tooling and cutters with some PCD inserts, very cool stuff, uh, as well as your more traditional line of, of solid carbides, finishers, ruffers, etc. Beautiful. You made this? Sick. Can you explain the work holding? Um, super glue. Super glue? Yeah. We <laughs> cut the inside first. Okay. Um, so it's just a large billet block right. of aluminum. Crazy organic shape. We left the ripples and everything right in the hat. Yeah. We, we took the first one off the picture because the glue failed. So the super tire, glue's never failed for us. <laughs> what like, are you doing wrong, dude? Come on. <laughs> the tape wicked up all the coolant. Yeah. So that yeah. when we took it off, there was a puddle in this. Right. Top, so that was full of cool. That's funny. Yeah, wish so. So we have our the page on our website. So card here to that where we're up updating it. So we just got in seven new tapes last week, and we're trying to solve two problems. One is long-term flood coolant wicking, which is what he said. But then also heat. Uh, we found the traditional masking tape fails at 90 degrees, and we've got some like 400 degree temp tape, which is way better, especially for dry cutting on steel, um, because the super glue doesn't fail. It's the tape that he said right. it fails. So more to come on that. So I see this and I think new colors, new yep. control. You can't see the servos, but that's the one yep. of the big differences. Yep, exactly. So we got new paint scheme, dark gray coloring. Um, the console is the prototype unit, so we're gonna integrate that a little more robust. Um, but we do have the full operator console. Uh, max velocity, the feed rate, speeds and overrides, your cycle start buttons, still touch screen capability. Um, the enclosure improvements and everything. Got all the same improvements with the enclosure and the chip management, coolant management that we have with um, our M series machines, but we've been upgraded to a servo based system. So that allows us to run 300 inches a minute. Okay. Um, with the BT spindle. Cutting or wrapping? Both. Both. Awesome. Yeah. 300 inch a minute X and Y, 230 NC. Okay. Yep. And then we have the BT spindle. So we're back to the industry standard kind of tapered tooling and retention knob. 
So no more TTS on this machine, tapered tooling, BT30, still with the ATC. Still tool changer, so we have the 12 position tool changer for the 1100. Yep. Um, 10 position on the 770. Which is more than the Series 3? The 1100 got a two tool increase okay. from the Series 3. Yep, awesome. I like this fixture, so it looks like a triple tree for a motorcycle, and they've got uh, one, two, three, it looks like uh, the Mighty Bite expansion clamps. Yeah, we work with Mighty Bite on it, so we have their talon grips um, and their pitbull clamps for OP1. And then we use their ID expansion clamps for OPS2 and 3. Yeah. OP3, we're just drilling and counter mooring the holes. We just made a quick little angle plate up out of some Mike 6. Aluminum. Look easy and effective, that was the goal. The, um, the Mighty Bite clamps, those will obviously offer a really, really good amount of work holding. Will they also locate? Yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. great, dual purpose. So you just have those two clamps, that's all yeah, on that? Yeah, these have 10,000 pounds of clamping force each. each. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. And no dampening issues when you're in the middle of that part doing the no, machining? It just, yeah. It just goes, out. it's awesome. You can actually damage the part. So like when I put in the clock feature, I had to do this last. And, um, if I tighten the clamps too much, oh, it'll, it'll blow actually, out. Yeah, yeah. it's meant to bend, right? Use so a torque a wrench. Use a torque wrench. Exactly. Yeah. So. Any idea of when we're going to be able to see these machines? Winter is when we're going to be able to release them. So this winter. Yeah. Okay, so months. Yeah, hopefully we're. I'd like to see them in everyone's hands like early next year, kind of. Thing. Okay. So hopefully first quarter. Awesome. Yeah, I. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, we've obviously had the kind of Frankenstein prototype in our shop. We've been doing a ton of machining with it, servicing. The extra power is great. The servos are phenomenal. Uh, we don't have the BT30 yet, but I'm excited to try that. Um, but the thing I saw at the show that we hadn't seen yet is the console, and that's a, I think a huge thing from a quality of life, from a usability, from training standpoint. I like that it's still touchscreen, but I also like that you still have a regular QWERTY keyboard. I think that's a really nice, uh, I just yeah. enjoy that much better than the uh, traditional machine center controllers that have uh, vertical buttons. Right. They're usually not the like, the not same. Not full keyboard where yeah. you can't actually type on it. Right, and that's one of the right. best improvements that we're seeing is this motion profile is just such a smooth click, 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 click. You don't have that more of a stepped motion right. you have on the older machines, and that means it moves nicer, it looks nicer, and it cuts nicer. The yeah. first thing we did when we got our servo-based MX was we put a tense indicator in the spindle, we put a block on the table, and we started doing that jogging. And that yeah, and just the motion sound, and yeah, you can see it and feel it when you hear it. You know, the machine itself, like when you're running it around, you know, it's yeah. quiet. So yeah. Yeah. Stepper noise. Right. They're all accustomed to. Yeah. The, the enclosure is much better. The lights are good. We're really excited for this machine. So, Jason, thanks for the tutorial, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Titanium. Little shear hog. Little BT30 shear hog. Mini shear. One inch, three fluter. They're looking at doing a washdown system, and if you see, you've got a little bit steeper sides, and you're going straight into the front pull uh, chip bin and coolant system, which is great. Yeah, it's nice. The higher uh, or stronger pumps, and they're looking if they do that washdown of having a potential second pump, so you can control them independently. millimeter tool with five millimeter buttons in it good for uh, surfacing you gotta try that out Tormach shared a booth with AB Tools, checking out what's going on with shear hogs, looking at their display, some of the firearms tooling they make like Picatinny rail cutters, as well as their usual reputation for having really, really good, really quick turnaround custom form tools. Sweet. That's pretty cool. It's a really good way of kind of comparing all the different versions, ways of converting, of creating linear motion. I actually really like that. So when we talk about the linear motor machines, or it's like a maglev train, they're using a magnet. Super precise, super fast, great acceleration parameters. Not inexpensive, but really cool. Checking out the Sandvik booth, 
One of their new things is not tooling. It's the Cora Plus process control. When you buy a machine tool, Sandvik is now offering these add-on cards that go inside the CNC machine's controller, and they're offering technology interfaces. So everything from vibration sensors, temperature sensors, bearing sensors, force sensors to monitor your machine condition and do preventative maintenance, not reactive maintenance. In other words, fix a bearing that's heating up before it actually goes bad and ruins your spindle or an axis or takes your machine down for a long period of time. Oh, nice to meet you, John. Hey, good, to meet, you. good to meet you. Amazing, right? Look at the stick out. I found I found the tap. Holy cow, look at that. Can you imagine tapping that? I'm not sure why you would. Or even this drill. So I'm sitting here watching this Nakamura Tome, two axis, you know, multi-turret lathe, and I almost needed a new pair of underwear when I saw this automation arm come in to load a new part. Incredibly fast, just came out of nowhere. Three turret dual spindle lathe, just amazing. Look at that. Bar fed, making not not making what you think comes off a of lathe. axis mill turn again not what you necessarily think when you see it amazing Looks like that's also an expanding mandrel, so they're able to hold it from the ID when it transfers to the sub. <laughs> Why buy one lathe when you can have eight in one? Look at this vertical turret lathe. Huge. Eighty-eight hundred pounds. Woo. God. Want to see some big machines? Oh, look at that! Oh my God! Look at that horizontal boring mill. Look at how big it is. When you're the operator, you have a booth. Everything else is just out in the open. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Control booth. We found the big parts. Look at that. That's actually probably a screw compressor. The screw compressor in our air compressor is about that big. Oh, here we go. Hydraulic. So maybe it's a hydraulic type of hydraulic compressor. Oh, look at that landing gear.
turboplane assembly out of, I think, titanium. Not finished machine, but, but amazing. Look at the tool holding in that. Look at the table size. So why do you buy big machines like that to make things like this? So that machine can tool change the whole head into this right angle roughing drive head. Amazing. Look at the tool change speed. One and three quarter inch drill, watch this. Speeds on it. You can see the chips right there. Like a little high feed, a high feed mill. Yeah, 50 big plus. Holy cow! That was an awesome three inch high feed mill. 750 RPMs, 150 inches a minute, 66 style depth of cut. Hot rolled, 836. We're gonna run this four inch face mill and a three inch, actually this is the, this is the four inch face mill. Take a look, 745. Okay, so, yeah, look at that time. The chips, can you see the chips coming off the back? Air bearing linear motor. That's cool. Look at that repeatability plus or minus one micron.
checking out the Lang booth. Look what they made. So we use their chip fan. Hilarious. Okay. Blades, centrifugally expand out, clean off your part. Different lengths. You were actually supposed to, to ramp these up though, uh, which I didn't know. We've just gone straight to full RPM, so I gotta check into that more. Um, but they work great. They do tend to create some mist, so it is a trade-off, but still pretty cool and kind of ingenious little thing on process reliability and just the overall workflow of making parts. You mind if I do it? different type of automation. So picture this is your machining cell, Lang base. Wait, it's moving the locking? It's, it's not a hydraulic or pneumatic. It's mechanically locked. Mechanically locked. That's awesome. So. <laughs> that solves the need to buy a 5-axis that has air or hydraulics through the table. Correct. That's cool. I like that. So, on this part, you got a variety of different features. And you're going to measure the circle, one of the slots, so the use of construction, the of those features, and then also apply some power. Here at the Daytron booth, we found CJ hey. and Dan. Hold that up. That is sick. So this is made on the cube. That's correct. Yeah. MLQ. Beautiful. Super high speed. Show the surfacing on the back. Yeah. Just stunning. Good old finish. Yeah. Alcohol coolant just evaporates. What's the spindle RPM? Uh, this is running at 40,000 RPM. 40k RPM. Awesome. And then what also caught my eye is this guy. You made this on? Oh, this was also on the MLQ. That's awesome. Look uh, at that. One off on the vacuum table. So we one off on the vacuum tail tool to cut the backside chamber. Look at the finishes, too. Look at the guitar body. So one of the cool things is it's not just machine tools, they've got some tooling that's really impressive. Oh my god, look at that. Holy cow. <laughs> I think that might be, yeah, that's one of the Sandvik, it's got to be one of the silent tools. Oh my god. Now yeah, there's one that's got an even bigger one somewhere like that. Yeah. Coro turn SL silent tool. Holy cow. of that. It's crazy. You don't need twin spindle. So they're actually independent, I think, up to a certain amount, you know, maybe 20, 30, or 40,000. So you don't have to set your tools the exact same height, uh, but you can get effectively double the output there.
Playzac, very X, very X500, but I like this. It's, it's got a it's sort of similar to like what you see on some of the brothers. It's got a twin pallet machine. You have a little barrel cutters? So, I, unfortunately, this software we use doesn't support them yet, but um, I'm familiar with them and I'm looking forward to it when we can. Yeah, that's kind of uh, what we did here with this demo. That's a, that's a quarter inch step over we took yeah, down, down that yeah, path. Yeah, no right. Yeah, cycle time savings. It's, it's... Look at these. Literally, this is what you do if you need to make a million parts in a matter of days or weeks. Amazing. still think this is one of the coolest demos I've seen all week and we've seen some amazing machines and met some amazing people and technologies and tools and so forth but uh, this I don't know this just just has me captivated to everybody that came up and said hi and talked about our story and how it's inspired you thank you keep it up take care folks we'll see you soon Thank you.